Earlier in the year, I became a trustee of the local makerspace called Build Brighton. And during that time, me and some of the other new you know, trustees have been working on improving the uh, kind of some of the processes and the internal operations of the space just to make things a little, run a little bit more smoothly and, uh, and yeah, just allow us to kind of scale up as we kind of move forwards. And one of the things I've started on recently is an access control device. So this would be an, a piece of electronic equipment which would fit in the power line for some of the, the larger tools and bits of equipment in the space. And it would allow users to tag into the tag into the equipment um, using the RFID tags, which we've already got in place for the main door. And you'd kind of uh, hook it up, the equipment would activate, and when you're done, you'd remove your tag. And this would allow us to kind of monitor usability or monitor kind of the usage for accountability reasons. And also, kind of more importantly, I think, for to determine how equipment's being used, how frequently stuff's being used, and allow us to then maybe invest in better equipment or potentially even remove stuff that's uh, rarely ever used. And so I started on this uh, about a week ago, and I'm just going to document some of the uh, kind of process over here. So this is my current hardware setup for the access control device. I've got a, uh, a kind of a screen just so you can kind of see what's going on. I've got uh, an internet connection via the Ethernet serial adapter, an Arduino at its core, and an RFID reader. And this is kind of the, the basic um, parts to set up, so you can kind of see what's going on. You've got the status information on the screen, um, RFID reader to scan the tags, Arduino to process it all, and then send it off again. Um, I'm settled on a few of these components so far. I'm definitely going to have an Arduino at its core, uh, specifically the kind of 328P kind of um, Atmel chip, simply because it's cheap and I've got a lot of experience using it, certainly more than anything else. The RFID reader, I started out using one of the ID20 um, devices, it's basically because that's what I had in the drawer. I bought this many years ago, but after looking at the price, these are uh, about 25 quid to buy new. Um, and I kind of after probably at least half a dozen of these modules, maybe more. Um, so that was kind of out of the question. So I've sourced this from eBay. It's kind of a, that seems to be very, very common module. They're, I guess they're about kind of uh, five quid, five, six pounds to buy. Um, and it's uh, just kind of straightforward serial output. Pretty much exactly the same as that. The only difference I have noticed is the output of this uh, proper ID20 device um, is uh, debounced. So you scan your tag and you get a solid single serial string kind of output. There's no uh, kind of fluctuation, it's there or not. Whereas with this, if you kind of have your tag kind of uh, floating around the edges, you'll get um, maybe a, a dozen or so um, tag IDs in a row. Um, so I've had to kind of handle that in software, but it's not a big deal and considering the price difference, these are brilliant. And range is still good enough to kind of work through a piece of uh, acrylic. Um, so that'll be the use of the final case. Um, and that's quite an interesting error. Um, but yeah, you can see um, even within that, it scans registers accordingly. Uh, for the internet connection side of things, I'm using the um, Ethernet to serial adapter, it's a previous project of mine, um, mainly because it's cheap and it's easy. I had considered using Wi-Fi for this and potentially even an integrated device like the Spark Core, um, but I've opted for this route simply because of uh, for reliability and, and cost again. The, an Ethernet connection is probably the most reliable option for us within the space. Um, the Wi-Fi details may change and you don't then want to go and have to reprogram or reconfigure all of these devices um, to connect, whereas the Ethernet is just going to work. And this is, um, yeah, it's kind of tested, it's already in use in the space in one place, and it's cheap, um, kind of, yeah, total cost of three, four pounds. The, I'll be producing a custom board for this. In fact, I've already sent off a, a basic kind of circuit design for um, this board's fairly kind of generic connectors in and out for all these parts. And so the total cost of that will be two or three pounds. So it'll be fairly cheap. The screen is the one thing that's kind of left up for grabs at the moment. The, these displays, um, again, this is one I, I had previously, uh, but to buy new, at least uh, kind of in this country, they are uh, kind of 15 quid, the cheapest I've seen these. And they are pretty big as well. 
And so that is something I'm still kind of toying with. I've got an OLED screen which I'm experimenting with, which I'll point out in a minute. The, the other side of it um, is the output, and that is, um, at the moment, probably going to be one of these relays. It's a, a solid state relay, and it accepts a nice uh, 5 volt input. The current draw is pretty low, so I'm, I think I can drive this straight from a digital output. And uh, we've got what's it, 40 amp kind of switching at mains voltage, so it should be ideal for pretty much anything we've got in the space. And that I, I think I'm, I'm settled on that again it's only uh, I don't know three four five pounds from eBay um, and that should be ideal for the screen for this I'm currently thinking of uh, an OLED um, OLED screen um, I got this a few days ago so I've just been playing around with uh, how to represent the data on the screen this kind of interface and so if I reset it it'll cycle through kind of um, various kind of states for this and the, the main reason I like these screens is it's a 64 um, by 128 character display so it, it's got um, a really high kind of pixel density it despite a really tiny size so it can display at least as much information as the big kind of um, LCD screen and they're, they're cheap I mean this this I previously bought um, I think uh, I've used an OLED screen once before, and that was an Adafruit product, and that was um, I'm 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 going to guess at 15, 20 quid, but this was uh, about four or five pounds from eBay. Again, um, okay, a little bit more than that, so okay, seven or eight quid from eBay, but still significantly cheaper than the larger screen and from other sources, and it works really, really well. You can run the same kind of graphics libraries with it, and. Um, and so far I'm certainly leaning towards this. The one downside is the size, the physical size of this. It is uh, pretty small, it's just under one inch diagonal. Um, I have found a 1.3 inch diagonal screen and I've got one of them on order, um, so that might be a little bit better in the long run, certainly for kind of readability at a distance. You can see here side by side the physical uh, kind of difference in size between these. Uh, it, it's kind of enormous versus tiny. Um, that I'd probably say is a little bit too bulky for the kind of unit that's on the wall um, whereas that's potentially too small but I think I can solve this just by so at the moment this is quite large text this word active here and I think if I get the, the core information the user will be interested in um, big enough like that I think this would be adequate and certainly if the, the 1.3 inch screen works as well one of the, the problems to kind of solve we had to kind of solve for this system was, uh, was, I guess, how you'd actually use it, how you'd use the equipment. Now, the, the idea is that we want, to, we, want people to use, we want people to activate a tool or a piece of equipment. So they'd use their RFID tag, they'd activate the equipment, and at which point it would become live for them to use. And then when they're done, it would then shut down, forcing the next person to use their own tag to turn it on. And there's no point someone activating something, something and then leaving it on for everyone else to use because then we lose the whole point of this in t determining the number of users using something and also tracking who used it at a particular time. And so the, the best solution I think we've come up with is to you take your tag and you hang it from the wall, hang it on the box. And so it would sit in front of the reader like so. Now at the moment these readers output a single tag a single kind of read and then stop. So the power for this device is going to come through a digital pin. So at the moment it scans the tag, it activates the equipment and then it kind of starts counting. And so probably after about 30 seconds it'll toggle the power to the reader, fetch a new tag, and it fetch another code in, verify it's the same user and carry on. That way, it's, um, if the user kind of removes the tag and walks away, the equipment will then shut off when they're kind of done with it. And also, it's, um, it gives kind of a bit of leeway for, um, so that user equipment just doesn't shut down without the user's warning. So there'll probably be a buzzer in here to alert them or maybe one or two attempts at reading a tag. But hopefully, if we can get an arrangement where a tag can kind of hang up nicely in front of the enclosure, then we get fairly kind of consistent reads. So the next step for this is um, the modifying the screen. So I'm 
pretty certain I'm done with this type of display. So I'm gonna put the OLED screen in place and uh, kind of get some of those displays working properly with this setup and start work on some of the um, kind of tag reading and shut down and the time sequencing for it. And hopefully uh, the, the circuit board will be two weeks time, but I'll have a bit of a better setup hopefully in the next week or so and I'll update when I have that done.